Tank sensors in an RV are something that I've never really been a fan of. And you look at social media, you see a lot of people complaining about the tank sensors on their RV. Well, today I wanna to share with you a solution that is much more accurate for giving you a picture of what's inside of your tank and letting you know how much you have left to use in there. Because what comes stock on an RV is usually just these lights. You press a light and it says it's around one third. That could be between one third and two thirds, somewhere under two thirds. So it could be somewhere near a half. So trying to figure out how much water you actually have in those tanks from these lights really isn't that great of a solution. So what I'm gonna show you today is a wireless solution that gives you a much more accurate picture of what's inside your tanks. Now today we're gonna to be taking a look at a wireless sensor. There are other aftermarket sensors that are out there like the sea level tank sensor. It's an uh, amazing unit that does a, a fantastic job. And I'll have a link down in the description to that as well as the one that we're talking about today. But that's a whole system that you have to be able to buy in order for your tank systems monitor to work. This, we can just buy a sensor or two if we wanted to and we can go from there. So let's get into what we're looking at today. This is the Mopeka Pro check for water tanks. So it's for fresh water tanks, gray water tanks. This is what's going to give us the information and give us a graduated response all the way through that tank. It's not just a two thirds, one third empty or full somewhere in the middle there. You don't really know what you're getting. This is gonna give us a much more accurate picture of how much water we have in each of those tanks. So we're gonna have one on our fresh water tank and we're also gonna put one on our gray water tank for the bathroom. That's usually we wanna see where our supply is at and then that that's usually the one that fills up first. So we're not really concerned all that much about our black tank because we know that we can go longer than we can typically on our gray tank. So it's nice to be able to know that level. Now, it is to be noted that this isn't recommended for black tanks because they say it's not for heavily soiled tanks. It'll mess with the, the sonar that's in there. But I do know that people have installed this on black tanks and have had success. The funny thing about the hardware for this is it's probably almost identical to the, the propane check that they have out there that just magnetizes to the bottom of propane tanks and it uses that same sonar to be able to tell you how full that cylinder is or how close to empty you are and give you those alerts. So this even has the magnets on the back and the way that this gets installed because those magnets aren't really going to do anything for us on our, our plastic tanks. We have a few things to be able to help prep putting this on and then we also have this that's going to hold it to the bottom of the tank and keep it kind of pressurized on the bottom of the tank so we don't have any, any room there for any inaccuracies. Now I will have tips along the way with the install because we do want to be able to access this and, and create an easier access if we need to to be able to get to this in the future so if the battery goes bad we need to replace the battery inside so we can still have it continue to work but we do need to set it up in the app and we are able to connect this to our Victron equipment so I'm also going to try and walk through that connect it to that but the app is pretty straightforward and easy to use. It's the same app as the one for the propane check, so it makes it easy. To set up the app, there is a sync button on the left to make it show up in the app. When you select it, it shows you the info for the sensor. To get it set up, I'm gonna just press the settings cog in the upper right corner. From here, you can rename it, which is helpful if you have multiple sensors. This is also where you can input the tank height. It's strange that you can't use decimals with inches, but you can use centimeters for more accuracy and then switch it back to percent for the display. You also can set how often the sensor is gonna send a signal. The longer you set, the longer the battery will last. The battery is a coin battery on the inside and the cover just snaps off and on. Now that we have those few settings done, we need to get the sensor on the bottom of the tank. So let's get this thing installed. So I dropped a little bit more of the underbelly than I needed to for a couple of reasons. When I did the one in the back, I just barely opened it up and it was really hard to show what was happening. But this one is gonna be easier to show. And since I did that, I think I'm gonna clean up the black tank to see how the sensor works. We'll, we'll test it out before I put it on the gray tank. So we'll put it on there first. Okay, so this might be something that we have to come back and test later because it was kind of inconclusive. I did see that the water was going up and then when we went to go empty it, we started getting the low quality on there, but we were able to see as we were flushing the toilet, you could see that water level going up in there. So it did work to some degree, but I also didn't do a full install on it. So I didn't have this ring on there that's uh, pressing it up into that tank. So I just basically have it on there with some of that sonic grease on there. I did try and install it at the lowest point in there and it, it didn't work as well as when I moved it up further up on the tank. There might be more stuff down at the bottom of the tank there. So 
I did have a little bit more luck up on the, the higher end of the tank because it is sloped. But let's get it installed on the gray tank like I originally intended. So when installing this, I don't want to get it too close to the edge. I also don't want to get it too close to metal. It's also best to get it as close to level as possible. I'm going to clean the install spot with a damp rag and then use rubbing alcohol to wipe down the mounting area. It's key to get it as clean as possible. It's never a good idea to skimp on prep work. They even provide a primer for the mounting area. I just crush the tube to activate it and then use it by rubbing it on the install spot. Once it is primed, you can pull the adhesive backing off and stick the bracket to the bottom of the tank. I'm trying to head off any potential problems and make sure the sonic grease is well coated over the center black portion of the sensor. They're really particular about that in the instructions. And with that, I want a really good contact from the back of the sensor to the tank. The good thing is the bracket that gets snapped on will help keep that pressure on the sensor of the tank. Now that I have that on, I want to take a look at the quality indicator in the app. It's just the, the three stars in the center of the app for that sensor. I've seen a consistent higher quality in the freshwater tank than I have on the gray water tank. That might be because the freshwater tank is flatter than the gray water tank because that one's more sloped, uh, even though it is hard to find a, a flat spot on both of these tanks. They kind of bulge and they change shape a little bit, even when you're from empty to full. So it, it changes it a little bit. But let's get into the pros and cons because we did get one for the freshwater tank and we liked it enough to add a second one for the, the gray water tank. Those are the, the two that we usually watch the, the closest when we're out boondocking. Overall, it's been a nice little upgrade to be able to have a, a much more accurate picture of what's happening inside of those tanks. So it gives us the information if we wanted to do dishes or how many showers we can take on that tank or until we're full. It just gives us a better picture and we have better use of the water having a more accurate picture of, of what's in there. So that's that's been beneficial. But it has hasn't been perfect. And I think some of that can be refined inside of the app because there is good information still happening there, but sometimes it gets to the low end of it and rather giving you a percentage, it'll just say low inside of the sensor. So usually when we get that low reading on the sensor, it's uh, we have about six gallons left in the fresh water tank. So that's, that's really not bad. That's right before it goes to empty, it gives us the, that low reading and we have six gallons in there. If we go by the buttons that are on the RV and we hit empty, we usually have between 18 to 20 gallons left once it's below that one third and somewhere between it's actually empty. We have about 18 gallons left there to use. So it's more accurate than that for sure. And like I said, I think some of that can be refined inside of the app because if you connect this to the Victron system, which has been great, I really enjoy being able to connect it to that. It allows us to really see it from anywhere because you have the, the VRM, you have all the, the backing of Victron and the infrastructure there, which is nice. But inside of their software, we can input Put where the bottom of the tank is. So you can't always just siphon out 100% of the water that's in there. Sometimes there's a little bit left in the bottom and that sensor is going to read that. So we can tell it when we are actually empty, when that pump's not going to be functioning anymore because there's not enough water in there. It's going to start pulling the air out of that tank rather than the water because it can't siphon anymore out. So inside the Victron app, we can tell it that, hey, that last half inch of water, it's not really usable. So the sensor is not going to say that it's still got water in there even though it doesn't. So I think that accuracy uh, helps inside of the Victron system compared to the app. Even though that the app is good for, for what it does, it's just nice to be able to go to the Victron system and get a little bit better picture all the way down to the very bottom. Now, here's something that I'm probably gonna change in the future, and I wish I would've done a little bit better for this, but getting access to that sensor, I don't wanna have to take down this underbelly when I wanna change out the battery. The batteries last a, a good long time, but the battery is gonna have to be replaced at some point. So I did measure and mark where those sensors are so I don't have to take down everything to locate it. I'm gonna be able to cut in an access point. So is what I wanted to do is I wanted to use something like this. This is for a, a marine application, uh, but it's just a little bit too heavy and bulky for mounting on the coroplast without being able to mount it to a structure. So oftentimes you can get these that are just a, a single access point so it's not a door that's quite as big as this. And also there's those ones that are out there that are more of a circle. The reason why I selected this and I wanted to try this first is because this is a door that's gonna mount under there. And so as we're going down the road, it's, it's not something that's gonna fall off if these latches were to, by some strange chance, kind of loosen up and open up. But the, the one that's more of a circle is a hatch that the, the lid actually comes off and I didn't want it falling off. I don't think that it would, 
but that's an option for getting access underneath there so you don't have to pull down the entire underbelly. You can get access through that coroplast to get to that sensor. So just a, a side note of something you'd wanna to consider to, to have the sensor under there. So it's nice to be able to have an option where if you just wanna add a sensor to one of your tanks for around 60 bucks, I'll put a link down in the description to this where you can just simply install it and be able to use the app and be able to connect it to your Victron equipment if you wanted to, uh, to be able to tell more accurately what is in your tanks. The highlight for me is not having to look at those lights and the guesstimation, even if those lights are working on your RV, some of those tank indicators aren't, but not having to have that guesstimation of just trying to figure out where it's at in the mix of things, you can look at the app and you could be, okay, I understand that I have 44% left fresh water. I, I can use that information and move forward. So I think that's going to do it for today. I hope this information helps you guys out being able to get out there and use your RV if this is an upgrade that you are interested in. So if you guys like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.